Number 1. Coolidge Dam This is located just over 2 hours east of Phoenix, Arizona, and it sticks out amongst other dams in the state due to its dome-shaped structures. It dams up the Gila River, creating the San Carlos Lake, and you can either drive across the dam or park and walk across it. Me personally, I would recommend parking and taking your time walking across the dam, only because you will get some spectacular views of the Gila River down below. Construction on the dam started in 1927 and was later completed in October of 1928. The dam stands at 250 feet high and has an overall length of 920 feet. The dam is on a reservation, so always be respectful. That means pack it in, pack it out. Don't freaking litter. Number 2. Roosevelt Dam This one is located 2 hours northeast of Phoenix, Arizona. This one dams up the Salt River, creating the popular summer destination known as Roosevelt Lake. And this one is one of my favorites in all of Arizona, because 1. There is a viewing point where you can get some pretty good shots of the dam, and 2. There is also a viewing point for the huge steel arch bridge that you see behind the dam. Construction on the dam started in 1906 and was completed by 1911. At that point in time, the dam only stood at 280 feet high, and you could even drive across it. However, in the early 90s, the dam's height was raised to 357 feet to increase the storage capacity of the reservoir. And being that you could no longer drive over the dam, they installed the Theodore Roosevelt Lake Bridge to take you from one side to the other. The bridge has a total length of 2,198 feet. Number 3. Horseshoe Dam this one is located an hour and a half slightly northeast of Phoenix, and what makes this dam stand out amongst the rest is the walkway underneath the skirt of the dam. That's right, you can actually walk underneath the dam as water spills over the skirt down into the river below. It's a pretty fun experience and you might even get a little wet, but hey, it's well worth it. Horseshoe Dam was built in the 1940s and it dams up the Verde River creating what we know today as Horseshoe Reservoir. Now it is in a rather remote area and if you do travel out here, just know that you do not need 4x4 or a high clearance vehicle. I did make it out here just fine in my Hyundai Accent, but the road is a little bumpy once it goes from pavement to dirt. Just go slow and you'll be just fine. Number 4. Bartlett Dam this is another unique one due to its multiple arch buttresses, and it's only located about 12 miles south of the previous Horseshoe Dam. Now you can't exactly park and get out to get super close to this one, but there is an area a half mile down from the dam where you can park, get out, hike a little bit, and still get some pretty good shots of the dam. This one was built in the mid-1930s, stands at 308 feet tall, and is 800 feet long. And of course it dams up the Verde River creating Bartlett Lake, but technically it's Bartlett Reservoir, but I've heard people refer to it both ways. Technically though, these are all reservoirs, considering they're all artificial lakes. Number 5. Hoover Dam This bad boy is located 45 minutes southeast of Las Vegas, Nevada, so if you're ever planning a trip out there to gamble your life savings and take a random chick back to your hotel room, you might as well check out one of the greatest engineering achievements of all time. This one stands at 726 feet high and is 1,244 feet long. It was built in the 1930s and dams up the Colorado River, creating the famous Lake Mead, or what's left of it. Technically, the water levels at the lake have been increasing due to above average snowpack, but let's face it, one year of above average snowmelt is not going to fix years of drought. But it's still a fascinating sight to see. And once you get done checking out the dam, be sure to walk across the Mike O'Callaghan Pat Sillman Memorial Bridge, where you can get an even better view of the dam. Unless you're afraid of heights, then maybe don't do it, but whatever, it's up to you. Now it will cost you a few bucks to park in the ramp on the Nevada side, but if you drive across to the Arizona side, all of the parking is free except for the area closest to the dam. There's also a gift shop there and a small restaurant in case you need a bite to eat to help work off that hangover. And hey, before we get to number 6, if you guys have any damn questions about these locations, feel free to ask me in the comment section down below. I'm pretty good about replying, and if you've ever traveled to any of these dams, feel free to share a memory with us as well. We would love to hear about it. Number 6, Stewart Mountain Dam. This one is located 45 minutes east of Phoenix and it dams up the Salt River creating Saguaro Lake. The dam was built in the late 1920s, stands at 207 feet high and is 1,260 feet in length. Now this one you can't get super close to like you can at Horseshoe and Hoover Dam, but there is a road that takes you far enough to where you can still get a pretty good view of the dam. The area is also pretty popular when it comes to boating, fishing, swimming, and tubing. And if you ever get the chance, I would also recommend booking a lake cruise with Desert Bell Cruises. It takes you all around the lake and you'll be able to get some really stunning views of the landscapes. I'll post the link for Desert Bell Cruises in the description down below. Number 7. New Waddell Dam Located 40 minutes north of Phoenix, construction on this dam started in 1985 and ended in 1994. It dams up the Agua Fria River, creating what we know today as Lake Pleasant. 
This one is a bit different from the previous dams, mainly because it's an earthen dam, meaning that it's an artificial dam created by the placement and compacting of various different types of soils and rocks. The dam stands at 440 feet high and has a length of 4,700 feet. Full disclosure though, you cannot walk on this dam. I used to wish you could though, because it would allow for some amazing views of the lake, but at the same time, that much foot traffic on this earthen dam would probably unsettle the foundation, and the last thing that we want is a wave of water crashing into Phoenix. Also, it would be a huge waste of water. Now if you don't have a drone or a boat, there is still a couple areas where you can park, get out, and still get some good shots of the dam. This lake does have cruises as well, and I'll be sure to post those links down in the description below. Number 8, Watson Dam. This one is located an hour and a half north of Phoenix. First we're going to talk about the dam, and then I'm going to talk about the surrounding landscapes that makes this place a must-see if you plan on coming to the area. Watson Dam, also referred to as Granite Creek Dam, was completed in 1920. It stands at 81 feet high and 187 feet in length. This one dams up Granite Creek, creating what we know today as Watson Lake. Now there is a trail that takes you all the way down to the bottom of the dam, and it's worth the hike. Although, it is a little scary. I mean, if you think about it, you're at the bottom of a dam, and if that thing goes, you're history. The lake is located within Granite Dells, which is a geological gem due to all the exposed bedrock and large granite boulders that are laid out in a sort of lumpy, rugged fashion. There's many trails surrounding the lake, and you can even rent kayaks there. It's also a photographer's paradise, especially at golden hour. Number 9, Gillespie Dam. This one is located an hour southwest of Phoenix and was built in the 1920s to help control water for irrigation purposes. It's a concrete gravity dam that has many large arches across the front to aid in support of the dam. Part of the dam collapsed during the winter months of 1993 due to unusually high amounts of rainfall. The dam stands at 20 feet tall and has a length of 1,700 feet. Now on your way out here, you're sure to cross the historic Gillespie Dam Bridge. Construction on the bridge started in January of 1926 and was later completed in August of 1927. The bridge has a total length of 1,662 feet. There's also a little parking area right near the bridge with a little viewing point. Heck, you can even cross the road and walk down to the dam for a better view. And finally, number 10, Glen Canyon Dam. This has become a pretty popular dam in the last couple years, mainly due to the drought threat and at the time the rapidly decreasing water levels of Lake Powell. However, in the last three months, the water levels have gone up by 60 feet due to above average snowpack in the mountains. And if you want to learn a little bit more about that, click the card in the upper right hand corner. Construction on Glen Canyon Dam started in October of 1956 and officially opened in 1966. The dam stands at 710 feet tall and has a length of 1,560 feet, making it about 16 feet shorter than Hoover Dam. Glen Canyon Dam is located 4 hours north of Phoenix, Arizona, and from Hoover Dam, it's a little over 5 hours northeast. It is possible to visit both of these dams in one day, it's just a really long freaking drive, trust me. Now Glen Canyon Dam is responsible for damming up the Colorado River, creating what we know today as the beautiful Lake Powell. There is a visitor center right next to the dam that has a small gift shop, restrooms, and a ton of information on the dam. And don't forget to walk across the Glen Canyon Dam Bridge. You can get a decent view of the dam from there and a pretty cool view of the Colorado River running through the canyon below on the other side. Truth be told, if you want to get an even better view of the dam, drive a mile and a half down the road to the Glen Canyon Dam Overlook and you'll be able to get views like this. And hey, if you want to learn and explore more dams in Arizona, click the next video now.